Hi there, I'm going to be reading uh, an extract from The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, this extract comes as the first time that Bilbo Baggins, the um, Hobbit, is going to be going into the cave where the dragon Smaug lives um, to try and get some treasure from there. Now you're in for it at last, Bilbo Baggins, he said to himself. You went and put your foot right in it that night at the party, and now you've got to pull it out and pay for it. Dear me, what a fool I was and am, said the least Tookish part of him. I have absolutely no use for dragon-guarded treasures, and the whole lot could stay here forever, if only I could wake up and find this beastly tunnel was my own front hall at home. He did not wake up, of course, but went still on and on, till all sign of the door behind had faded away. He was altogether alone. Soon he thought he was beginning to feel warm. Is that some kind of glow I seem to see coming right ahead down there? he thought. It was. As he went forward, it grew and grew, till there was no doubt about it. It was a red light steadily getting redder and redder. Also, it was now undoubtedly hot in the tunnel. Wisps of vapour floated up and passed him, and he began to sweat. A sound, too, began to throb in his ears, a sort of bubbling, like the noise of a large pot galloping on the fire, mixed with a rumble as of a gigantic tomcat purring. This grew to the unmistakable gurgling noise of some vast animal snoring in its sleep down there in the red glow in front of him. It was at this point that Bilbo stopped. Going on from there was the bravest thing he ever did. The tremendous things that happened afterwards were as nothing compared to it. He fought the real battle in the tunnel alone, before he ever saw the vast danger that lay in wait. At any rate, after a short halt, go on he did and you can picture him coming to the end of the tunnel, an opening of much the same size and shape as the door above. Through it peeps the hobbit's little head. Before him lies the great bottommost cellar or dungeon hall of the ancient dwarves, right at the mountain's root. It was almost dark, so that its vastness can only be thinly guessed, but rising from the near side of the rocky floor there was a great glow, the glow of smell. There he lay, a vast red golden dragon, fast asleep. A thrumming came from his jaws and nostrils and wisps of smoke, but his fires were low in slumber. Beneath him, under all his limbs and his huge coiled tail, and about him on all sides, stretching away across the unseen floors, lay countless piles of precious things. Gold, wrought and unwrought, gems and jewels, and silver red stained in the ruddy light. Smaug lay, with wings folded like an immeasurable bat, turned partly on one side, so that the hobbit could see his underparts, and his long pale belly crusted with gems and fragments of gold from his long lying on his costly bed. Behind him, where the walls were nearest, could dimly be seen coats of mail, helms and axes, swords and spears hanging, and there in rows stood great jars and vessels filled with a wealth that could not be guessed. To say that Bilbo's breath was taken away is no description at all. There are no words left to express his, st his staggerment, since men changed their language that they learned of elves in the days when all the world was wonderful. Bilbo had heard tell and sing of dragon hordes before, but the splendour, the lust, the glory of such treasure had never yet come home to him. His heart was filled and pierced with enchantment and with the desire of dwarves, and he gazed motion motionless almost forgetting the frightful guardian and the gold beyond price and count. He gazed for what seemed an age before, drawn almost against his will, he stole from the shadow of the doorway across the floor to the nearest edge of the mounds of treasure. Above him the sleeping dragon lay, a dire menace even in his sleep. He grasped a great two-handled cup as heavy as he could carry and cast one fearful eye upwards. Smaug stirred a wing, opened a claw, the rumble of his snoring changed its note. Then Bilbo fled. But the dragon did not wake, not yet, but shifted into other dreams of greed and violence, lying there in his stolen hall while the little hobbit toiled back up the long tunnel. His heart was beating, and a more fevered shaking was in his legs than when, when he was going down, but still he clutched the cup, and his chief thought was, I've done it, this will show them. More like a grocer than a burglar indeed. Well, we'll hear no more of that. Nor did he. 
Balin was overjoyed to see the Hobbit again, and as delighted as he was surprised, he picked Bilbo up and carried him out into the open air. It was midnight, and the clouds had covered the stars, but Bilbo lay with his eyes shut, gasping and taking pleasure in the feel of the fresh air, and hardly noticing the excitement of the dwarves, or how they praised him and patted him on the back, and put themselves and all their families for generations to come at his service.